shadows settle on the place that you love. Our minds are troubled by the emptiness. Destroy the middle, it's a waste of time. From the perfect start to the finish line. And if you're still breathing, you're the lucky one. Cause most of us are heaving through collected lungs. Setting fire to our insides for fun. Collecting names of the lovers that went wrong. The lovers that went wrong. Good morning, and it's Monday again. Chasing visions of our so we're going to be moving around a lot today, and so we're going to be beginning on our bellies. You can put your hands east and west, and you can put your head to one side. If you're still bleeding, you're the lucky one. Most of us are heaving through our sides and we are burning, setting fire. Mm -hmm. And um, we're going to be talking about the effects of gravity today on not only your life but on your yoga practice. When to fight it, when to embrace it. So begin on your bellies. And um, I'm just going to let you know it's been kind of a crazy morning. So it's 5.59 and I feel like it's oh, 12 o'clock in the afternoon. So let's begin. Starting on your belly. And letting your stomach really press against the mat when you're in You want to really feel the belly press. Push it out. Feel gravity respond. And then every last bit of air and feel gravity help you to push it in and breathe. Let's do that a couple more times. So laying flat on your belly arms east and west, either forehead to your mat, or you can put a cheek one side, but have your feet wide, because especially for women, it's lovely on the asiduous. And when you take a deep breath in, really press the belly in. And when you exhale, feel your whole body relax. I want you to do this a couple of times, really tensing up your body so everything is tense. And when you release, open your mouth, audible sigh, let everything go. So it's relaxation through contraction. We do that a lot in Yoga Nidra. Do it one more time on your own. Retain the breath, feel the belly pushing against gravity trying to lift your body up. Retain it to almost the point of stress. And when you exhale, flop, let everything out. And then take a couple breaths. And feel the relaxation inside you. Feel how the Inhale is effort, and the exhale is release. So during your day today, if something really charges you with anxiety, remember this contraction through relaxation exercise. 
Let's bring our hands underneath our shoulders. Roll the shoulders back, and this time when you inhale, press the belly, but squeeze the upper back. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Relax the legs, relax the neck. And on the exhale, relax. Can you feel your heart racing? Can you feel the muscles of the upper back kind of pulsing? Let's do it again. Inhale, retract the shoulders. Press the belly forward, relax the legs. Lengthen through the cervical spine. Hold until the point where you need the exhale. Come down. Relax the arms. Let's keep the knees apart, bring the heels together. Hands are gonna be one on top of the other, forehead on top. Squeeze the heels together, inhale, and squeeze the lower body, press the heels together, press the belly into the mat, take a deep breath in. And on the exhale, relax the low body. Give yourself a little left to right, hip wiggle. Let's get those glutes to take notice. Knees apart, heels together, take a breath, push in, squeeze up, upper body completely relaxed. It's already got its wake up call this morning. Squeeze, 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 push the heels, take a breath, completely relax. Wiggle the hips. Putting the two pieces together, coming into Shalambhasi. Hands behind you. Roll the shoulders back, that's the first thing. Lift the legs, bend the knees, press the heels. Inhale up into Shalambhasana with lower body modification. Squeeze the heels, take a breath in, and come down and relax. <sighs> Wiggle the hips. Waking up that upper back, glutes. Let's do it one more time. This time, with arms in front, head down, bend the knees, lift the heels as you lift the upper body. Superman, Shalambhasa, press the heels in together. Take a breath in and relax down. <sighs> Easy breaths. Hands to the mat, press up and into table, and let's release now the long muscles of the back and the spine. Oh, coming into Bhujanga to Parmanasana and Bitliasana. Easy, easy, easy. Breaths in, breaths out. Keeping the knees underneath the hips, the hands a little in front of the shoulders. Bring the left leg out toward the center line of the left side of your mat. Make sure you're not pressing into the right shoulder. And let's lift that left leg. Five, four, three, two, hold. Breathe, tighten, and then drop the leg down. So we are fighting against gravity with the leg up, but now with the leg down, gravity is gonna help us to open the hip. So we inhale and exhale forward and back. And now as gravity hits that left leg, instead of making it e harder, it's going to make it easier because the hip wants to hinge. Gravity is helping keep that top bone inside that hip joint. Beautiful. and then bring the left leg in. Let's do the same now with the right. And I'm gonna stay here because I wanna show you that I'm not leaning into my left side. So if I'm leaning into my left side, you can see what happens. You can spread the hands a little wider if you want, but keep the hips in neutral. And let's lift that right leg. Five, four, three, two, hold against gravity. Feel the gravitational pull. It wants us to go back down to the earth. Take a breath in, feel the contraction, and then immediately feel the release. Ah. 
Now the hip joint is ready to receive synovial fluid and opening through the muscles, not through the ligaments and tendons. Forward and back, nice and easy. Breathe. And then bring the right knee back in. Under the hip, hands still a little in front of the shoulders, and let's get into plank. Drop the hips a bit. Soften the knees first. Set the elbows. Make sure you're not hyperextending. Soft little bend is great. Look at your feet. Stay, and we're going to lift the right arm. Again, feel gravity. It's pulling us down to the ground. Now squeeze the quads. Try not to hyperextend in the supportive elbow. Bring the right hand down. Ha! Huh. Inhale, bring the left arm up. Soften in that elbow on the supported side. Extend the left arm. Keep the head in line and relax. <sighs> Lift the right leg. Don't move to the left. Squeeze into the glutes. Soften the left supported knee. Take a breath in. Drop the right foot. Let's go to the opposite side. Squeeze and lift the left leg. Keep the hips in neutral. Really engaging the back body. Exhale and come down. And now when we relax, we relax in downward facing dog. Easy breath in. Easy breath out. Hmm. Taking your attention to your tailbone. So rather than think of the hamstrings, let's think of the tailbone. We want to release the tailbone, mutate at the hip, anterior lift, head and neck are relaxed, lift the toes and think lengthen the feet, don't think drop the heels, lift the feet, lengthen back and feel the downward facing dog. Gravity really helps us in down dog, it helps us to release the head, cervical spine, and if our shoulders are diagonally behind the wrists and the tailbone is in neutral, it really takes pressure off the lordotic spine. So breathe. Take a deep breath in. Inhale and lift the heels. And exhale and drop them down. Inhale, lift the heels. And this time bend the knees and squeeze and flex all 10 toes. Don't let the knees drop. Take a breath in and rock it back. Let's do a nice morning stretch for those toes one more time. Being careful that you're not pressing into either the great toe or the pinky toe side of the foot. Stay equally firm through the back triad of the foot. Let those knees hover. Take a breath and squeeze and stretch those heels back. Don't think down, think lengthen. Take a breath in. And on the exhale, walk to the top of your mat and fold. Drop your head and neck. Maybe take your fingers and massage the neck, especially behind the ears, down the mandible, the jaw. Stick out your tongue, maybe a lion's breath. Drop the arm and rock forward and back on your feet, lifting the toes and lifting the heels. Lift the toes, lift the heels. Again, lift the toes and hold. Try to get a deep stretch. Stay right in the center of those heels. Inhale, exhale, lift the heels. Keep the heels lifted, soften the knees. Keep those heels lifted, soften the knees. And come all the way up, use your balance, get your core engaged, and lift high. And come down. <sighs> that felt good. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Exhale, forward fold, and bring the right leg back. Drop the back right knee. And come into Anjaneyasana. You can scoot your left leg up forward more if you want. And again, just... Allow everything to happen. I'll let gravity do the work. So feel gravity now.
back body a little more aerodynamic. Mind your left knee. Don't let it pop out. And then rotate the left foot 45 degrees and bring both hands to the inside. So this is gonna be a modified lizard. We're not gonna roll onto the pinky toe edge of our foot, but we are gonna open up the sartorius muscle in the inner thigh, ah, allowing for more mobility in the hip. Remember the, the hip is a stability joint, so we don't want it loose and open. We want stability in the hip joint, but we want the muscles to be open and ready to stretch. And then we're gonna take the right hand more to the left side of the mat, left hand on your left knee, an easy stretch, don't look back. Keep the cervical spine out of this twist. Let the left hip come forward, spine, steers the hips and the hips steer the spine. Take a breath in, on the exhale, come back, heel toe of the left foot back in, reach the arm up, take a breath in, hands to the mat, tuck the back right toe, step the left foot back, downward facing dog. Inhale, come into plank. Exhale, either drop the knees or keep them up. Come all the way down to your mat. Now we've already warmed up the upper back, so let's roll the shoulders. Inhale, Bhujangasana. Do not look up, keep the chin in neutral. Exhale, fold, squeeze and engage the quads. Lift the knees, press equally into the feet. Take a breath, then against gravity, press up. Exhale, feel gravity, help us. Open back. Right leg lifts. Step the right leg forward. Drop the back left knee. And just heel. Lift the tailbone to lift the heart. Open up the right foot more to the right side of the mat. 45 degree slant. And both hands to the inside. Releasing tension in the hip by opening the inner thigh. Leaving the joint alone. Left hand more to the center, right side of the mat. And open up. Nice, easy twist. Keep the head and neck in neutral. Breathe. Feel gravity in different parts of your body. Pushing the right knee away. Maybe pushing down a little more on that left hand, but anchoring with the long leg in the back. Take a breath in, come back. Heel toe the foot back. Hands frame the front right foot, tuck the back left toes. Step it back, downward facing dog. Easy. Inhale, feel gravity. Exhale, feel it even more. Inhale, feel it even more as you come up into your first real extension, maybe upward facing dog. Think about your feet. Is gravity pushing the heels away, making it easier? If that's the case, come back to the center line of the foot or tuck the toes if that keeps you more honest. Exhale, downward facing dog. Take a breath in, lift the heels, drop the knees, look forward and on the exhale, Walk or hop, halfway lift, exhale, fold, inhale, rise, exhale, and fold, left leg steps back, high lunge, inhale, bring the arms, sweep them up, set the shoulders, feel where gravity is pulling at you, and re respond with a tight squeeze. Engage the back left glute. Think external rotation of the front quad. It's gonna help you to keep the pelvis in neutral. And without straightening the front leg, sweep the arms back and lift into airplane. Hold, take a breath in, bring the arms up. Again, press against gravity, squeeze, hips at neutral, hold. 
Inhale and come up one more time. Don't straighten that front right leg. Inhale, lift, squeeze. Inhale and rise. Exhale, hands to the mat. Step the right leg back. Inhale into plank. Exhale, low plank. Inhale, upward facing dog or cobra. And remember, you can always just go into down dog and wait for us. <sighs> left leg rises. Take a breath. Step the left leg forward. Come on, Anjaneyasana. Pull the left hip back. Pull the right hip forward. Shoulders relax. We have airplane, Dikasan, right into Alanasan three times, keeping the front left knee bent. Inhale, lift. Exhale, bring it back down. Inhale, exhale, feel where you're pushing against gravity. That's where you're gonna get those muscles to engage. Inhale. Exhale, one more time, lift. Gravity pushing against that right body. Anchor with the left foot and the left bent knee. Pull the left hip back. Inhale, up. Hands to the mat, step the left leg back. Downward facing dog. Inhale, high plank. Exhale, feel gravity, low plank. Inhale, push against gravity, upward facing dog or cobra. Let's go one more push up. Let's feel gravity. Push down helps, it's easy. Push up, oh my goodness, that's hard. Downward facing dog. Ah. Ooh, what a way to start a Monday. Take a breath, lift the heels, bend the knees and exhale. Walk or hop. Halfway lift. And let's stay here for a minute because it's just so lovely. Ardha Uttanasana. Again, tailbone is rising. There's a nutation of the hip. We want to think length in the back. Toes lifted will give you more of a stretch toward the Achilles tendon. And let's rock forward and back, asking for the toes to lift and to come back Toes lift, heels lift. Toes lift, heels lift. Come down, exhale and fold. Inhale, rise. Exhale, hands to heart. Let's pause here for a minute. Feel gravity pushing now at the top of our head and into our shoulders. But again, the inhale takes effort. We push against gravity, but the exhale is delicious. One more time, inhale, reach the arms. Exhale, forward fold. Lift the toes on the way down, drop the head and neck. Feel gravity pushing right at your hip. So not rounded back at all, lifted tailbone. Engage and lift that cheek. Exhale, fold, inhale, rise. Exhale and fold. Ardha Uttanasana, make sure you have blocks if you need them. Inhale, halfway lift. Keep your hands on blocks or the mat. Press into the right foot. Don't move it to the center line and lift the left leg. Hips are neutral. Inhale, lift the hands up. Exhale, drop it down. Toes on the right foot, no pressure. Inhale, lift. Exhale, drop. Inhale, lift. Exhale, drop. Bring the left foot down. Let's go to the left side now. Anchor with that left foot. Bring the right leg back. Lift it. Inhale. Exhale, drop. Inhale, squeeze into the left glute. Exhale, drop. One more time. Inhale, lift. Exhale, drop. Bring the feet together. Inhale, half. Exhale, stretch. Inhale, rise. <sighs> Hands to heart. Couple of breaths. Feel the back glutes. Prime mover in that muscle. Inhale, reach the arms. Exhale and fold, fold. Go with the flow. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. Hands to the mat, step back. Chaturanga. Dandasan, 
Inhale, full Janagasana or Urdhva Mukha Svanasana. What are the feet doing? Check in. Exhale, come down into the push-up. Hold, feel gravity, and press up against it. Press back down dog. Ooh, baby. Take a breath, lift the heels. Exhale, walk or hop. Top of the mat, halfway lift. Fold, rise. Fold again, ha. <sighs> Half lift. Mat hands, feet, back of the mat. Go ahead, go through the connecting vinyasa or come right into downward facing dog, it's your choice. One push up or two push ups, your choice. Surya Namaskara, A positioning, one more time, bend the knees, inhale, exhale, walk or hop. Halfway lift, exhale, fold, inhale and rise. Exhale, hands all the way down to the mat. Feet to the back, go through the vinyasa or go right into down dog. Remember you have choices, one push up, before the upward facing dog, and maybe one push up after upward facing dog. Down dog. Now we're going to do that lateral extension we did in table, but we're going to be doing it from down dog to plank. So let's lift the left leg. Keep the right foot under the right hip. So if you keep your right foot under your right hip, you have to work the external obliques more. If you bring your right foot into the center line, now you're not really working your obliques. So make your choice. Maybe you don't feel like working them today. Take a breath. Come into plank, keep the leg up. Bring the left leg, try to touch in line with your right, the left hand. Bring it back, down dog. Take a breath. On the exhale, bring the leg forward. Oh my goodness! And bring it back. Try not to press into the toes of the right foot. Inhale, bring the left foot, touch it, and bring it back. Beautiful. And then let the left leg come down under the left hip. Whew, catch your breath. That's a lot of work. Long levers in gravity make the postures more difficult. Inhale, right leg. Look at your left foot. Should be under the left hip. Uh-oh, I don't know if I have enough room on this side. Inhale, exhale. Bring it all the way down and bring it all the way up. Deep hell, exhale, all the way down, like you're doing fallen triangle, and back. That wasn't very graceful. Do it one more time, all the way down, and all the way up. Beautiful, down dog, rest. Drop the knees and come into child's pose. Take a couple of breaths, easy breaths. Easy, easy breaths. Come back into downward facing dog and breathe. Deep inhale, lift the heel. Exhale, walk or hop. Top of the mat, inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold, inhale, rise. Exhale, fold, hands to the front, feet to the back. Go through the connecting vinyasa or come right into downward facing dog. One push up, maybe two. Lift the right leg as you come back. Ikapada Adho Mukha. And then step the right knee into your chest and hold. Hold, lift, round the back. Bring the knee to the forehead, the forehead to the knee. Look forward, step the right leg forward and inhale into Alanasana. Hold, breathe. <sighs> We're gonna hinge forward at the hip. Make the hips neutral, head between the elbows. We're not gonna do much moving, but we're gonna bring the left knee in, straighten the right. Inhale back, same position. Exhale, pull it in, bring the arms back. Inhale, exhale, pull it in. Inhale, two more. Exhale, pull it in. Inhale, one last time. 
Keep the front knee straight. Hold the tuck. Sweep the arms forward. Warrior three. And I think I went out of the camera, but that's okay. You don't need my arms. Hands to the mat. Drop the left foot. Right leg back. Chaturanga. Upward facing dog. Maybe cobra. Feet check. Downward facing dog. Left leg is going to rise. Step the left leg forward. Hold the knee. Press up. Drop the head. Tuck in. Push the small of your back up against gravity. Engage the abdominals. Use the exhale to lift your butt. Step the left leg forward. Alanasana, hold. Ooh, I'm sweating. Drop, hip set neutral. I have to keep my back right leg bent because of an injury. That's a long story for another day. Hinge forward at the hip. We're gonna stay here. Upper body melts right there. Squeeze the upper back, feel gravity against the rhomboids and the trapezius. Exhale, straighten the front left leg, pull the right knee in. Inhale and come back. Again, two, inhale and come back. Can you feel that down dog tuck of the knee standing? Feel gravity pushing you in a different way. Remember, we're doing the same thing with our bodies. Inhale. This one we hold to make it five. Hold. Sweep the arms forward and sweep the right leg back. Tuck the toes. Warrior three. Breathe. Hold your balance. Bring the feet, hands to the mat. Drop the right foot. Step back with the left foot. Hold your plank. Breathe. Exhale. Inhale. Maybe another exhale push up. Downward facing dog. And breathe. Inhale, lift the heels. Exhale, walk or hop, top of the mat. Halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise. Hands to your heart. <sighs> Let it go. Feel the heart rate. Nice and easy. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. Hands to the mat. Go through the connecting vinyasa. One more abdominal work. And we're done. Come into plank. Well, done a little. First, just look at your feet. We're going to sweep the heels from left to right. We've done this before. Shoulders tight. Exhale when you drop the hip, the heels. Inhale up. Exhale, drop the hips and the heels. Up. Other side. Now we're going to add the swimming arms. Dropping the heels to the left. Right arm comes up. And we come back down and we just go right to the other side. Swimming planks. Using your whole core. Maybe you start to lift the corresponding foot. So as the right arm comes up, the right leg comes up. As the left leg comes up, the left arm comes up. One more time, both sides. Inhale. Exhale. Ha. Huh. Inhale. Exhale. Hold. Down dog. Breathe. Lift the heels high. Take a breath in. Walk or hop and come into Utkatasana and breathe. So today we're gonna to be doing Utkatasana. One hand on your heart. I'm gonna turn sideways. One hand on your lordotic spine. Maybe even a little bit on S1, okay? So we're like at L3 and our middle finger goes down to maybe S2. And I don't want you to move your chest. Instead, the hand that's on the tailbone, depress the tailbone down. Can you feel how the chest drops? 
Now lift the tailbone up. You're going to feel automatically the chest rises. So this is why we don't want to angle the tailbone down in down dog. Because we're telling our body to crouch. We want to lift. Okay? And if you think of a dog that's scared, he tucks his tail so he can make himself smaller. A dog that's happy or a dog that wants to do something fun lifts his tail, he makes himself larger. So think about that as you're in Utkatasana. Keep the tailbone in neutral, lift the arms. Inhale, press the heels high, hold the knees. Press, don't go into the toes. You want to keep stay on that transverse arch. Drop the heels, sit a little deeper, relax the shoulders back, and stretch the crown of the head to the ceiling. Breathe. Lift the right heel and pulse into the left leg. Squeeze, so the left foot is doing the work, but make sure the left hip isn't popping out. We want the glute to start taking ownership of Utkatasana. So lift all 10 toes and press into almost the arch of the foot on the left side. Feel how that engages the glute. Drop the right heel, lift the left heel, tuck the right hip in, and let's do some pulses. Thinking about lifting the arch as you squeeze into the right glute. Squeeze. That gluteal muscle has gotten very lazy and we want it to get back into what it was supposed to be. The Clydesdale of the workers. Both feet down, hands to your heart. Lift the tail, feel the heart open. Take a breath in, and on the exhale, chest to thighs, and fold. Inhale, halfway lift, hands to the mat. Go through the connecting vinyasa with either one push-up or two, and it is always your choice. And I always renegotiate my feet. One push-up or two, your choice. Downward facing dog, right leg lifts. Don't move that left foot into the center line. Step the right leg forward, bend the front knee, drop the back heel. Warrior one. Settle, shoulders down your back. Think about the back foot. Gravity now is pushing dramatically on the back leg. It's our long lever. So in order to be lazy, a lot of us lean into the front leg and forget about this back leg because it's easier. Instead, I want you to think about engaging the left glute and pushing down on that left leg, bringing your pelvis back to the neutral line, bending the front knee, and then isometrically pull the body toward the midline. Now lift the arms, squeeze that back leg, pull the right hip, make it be in line, soften the head and neck. Take a breath, hands to the mat, connecting vinyasa or right into downward facing dog at your choice. Connecting vinyasa, if you want, with a double push-up, press back, left leg is going to rise now. Step that left leg forward, set the warrior one up, keep the front knee bent, tuck the hip in, come up with a bent knee. Think about where gravity is hitting you now, and let's let that be one of our anchors. Right hip, long leg, inhale, sweep the arms up. Set the shoulders down your back. Are the left and right hip neutral and parallel? Breathe. Tailbone is in a neutral line. We are not tucking that tail. We want to make ourselves bigger, taller, not smaller. We are not hiding. Take a breath, hands to the mat. Connecting vinyasa, downward facing dog, if you will. One push up, maybe two. Press back. Take a deep breath in, walk or hop, top of the mat. Halfway lift, inhale. Hands down to the mat, fold. Inhale, rise. Exhale, Utkatasana. Single breath all the way through the series. Inhale, rise. Exhale, fold. Inhale, half. Hands to the mat, hold your breath until you get into low plank. Inhale, high plank. Exhale, hold plank. Inhale, hold. Exhale, push up. Exhale, down dog. Right leg lifts. Step the 
right leg forward, feel the left leg engage as you come up. Hands to the mat, step the right leg back, connecting vinyasa or right into down dog. One push up, maybe two. Left leg rises, step the left leg forward. Come in to warrior one with strength, using that back right leg. Exhale, hands to the mat. Go through the connecting vinyasa or right into down dog. One push up, maybe two. Oh, that wasn't a very good push up. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, walk or hop. Inhale, half. Exhale, fold. Come back into Utkatasan. This time, hands holding at goddess. And breathe. Hold. Where is gravity hitting you? Is gravity pushing your shoulders forward? If that's the case, fight gravity. So gravity is obviously pushing more to the back body, a little bit into the quads, lift the toes so we're not pressing into the knees. Good. Inhale, reach the arms, squeeze them back, come deep and come into humble warrior chair. Take a breath. Hold. Exhale, fold. Inhale, half. Hands to the mat. Connecting vinyasa or right into down dog. Right leg is going to lift. Step the right leg forward. Warrior one. Inhale. Coming up with the front bent knee and coming up using the back left leg. So the transition from right leg forward to warrior one, you squeeze into the back left leg and when you pull up, you engage like you're doing cobra and roll the shoulders. It's gonna get that whole back line fired up. Reach the arms, lean forward. We've done this before. Press into the front foot, we've done this before. And then bring the foot down and there's no reason to straighten the front leg for warrior two and breathe. I'm gonna step back a little, good. Let's bring both hands to the head. Fingertips right behind the ear. Take a breath in. Now we're gonna practice for side angle. Without lifting the hip, drop the front elbow. Can you drop the hip more? Inhale up. Exhale down. Inhale up. Exhale down. Inhale up. Keep the hands up where they are. But this time, reverse the warrior. Use your elbows, not your hands. Push down with the left elbow, lift with the right, and keep the pelvis moving and holding in that warrior two. Inhale, extend the arms. Breathe. Take a breath. Exhale, come all the way down. Step the right leg back, go through the connecting vinyasa. Remember, you always have the option always of just doing downward facing dog. I forgot what I was saying. Tuck the left hip in and when you come up, use that right side, use both backs, roll the shoulders, come up with strength. Lift the arms, worry one, breathe. Lean forward, hinge at the hip, pull the left hip back. Lift the back leg, re-establish to warrior two. Never straighten that front knee. Bring the hands now to the head. I'm gonna stay here because I wanna show you. You wanna engage and squeeze posterior right side. Inhale, lift the elbow. Exhale, come down, drop the elbow to the knee but don't lift the hips. Inhale and lift, exhale, drop. Inhale, lift, exhale, drop. Inhale, lift, exhale, drop. This time, reverse the warrior, hold the elbows. And on the exhale, come into warrior two, extend the arms. Take a breath in, hands to the mat, connecting vinyasa or right into down dog. So it's your choice here. Take a deep breath in, lift the heels. Exhale, walk or hop, top of the mat. Inhale, half. Step into the right leg. This is gonna look familiar. Lift the left leg. Inhale, come right into warrior three. And hold. Breathe. 
Now pulse that left leg up. Five, four, engage that back left glute. Soften the supported knee. Hold again. Step back, warrior two. Breathe. Ha. Ah. Woo, warrior two is a nice, easy position. Let's reverse the warrior, but think elbows. Press into the front knee. And this time, Parsifal Konasana, side angle, but let the, the right arm float. Lift the left arm. Rotate the body, let the right hip come forward a little bit. And bring the right hand and the left hand back. And you can see, here's our warrior two, right? So the difference between warrior two and side angle is really just the position of the torso and the body. Coming into extended side angle if you want. Arm of the right hand outside lines up to the inside of the right leg. Lift, drop the pelvis, breathe. Inhale and come into warrior two, reverse the warrior. And come right back into side angle. Utita baby, both arms now lifting. Lift the toes of the front foot. Take a breath in, woo -hoo -hoo. Warrior two, never straighten that front leg, cartwheel down. Connecting vinyasa or right into down dog. One push up or maybe two, your choice always. Downward facing dog. Left leg rises. Step the left leg forward. Step the right leg forward. Inhale, half. Exhale, fold. Now, pressing into the left leg, lift the right leg. Coming up, hold. Warrior three. Press. Soften and pull the left hip back. Breathe. Step back and open up warrior two and settle. So with my back to you, I'm gonna to try to make it so you can see the back muscles are working really hard. So gravity is pushing us down. Long levers pushing our arms down. So we wanna lift the arms. But in order to help the long levers, we wanna engage the shoulders and lengthen and shorten the length. So here's body rounded. You can see my arms look longer. Engage and squeeze. Upper back is holding us. Levers are shorter. Come into Parsifal Konasan with the left arm barely over the top. Right arm high. Beautiful. Now engage and fire up right posterior deltoid. Engage the left glute. Feel the body in warrior two. Hands. Elbows and see where we are. Warrior two, we just did this, right? Now let's go into Utita Parsifal Konasan. Extend the left leg down the inside of the left. Extend the left arm to the inside of the left leg. Lift the right arm. Soft on both sets of toes. Breathe. Inhale, pull back into warrior two, but don't straighten the front leg. So gravity is pushing us. And a straight leg makes us more aerodynamic. No gravity push. Here, push, push, push. So we want to fight the gravity. We want to use it to make us stronger. Let's go into Utita Parsifal Konasan. And now really feel we have two long levers. So how do we combat this? We squeeze into the more aerodynamic leg. This back left leg doesn't have a lot of pressure in it. Take a breath, come back into warrior two. Connecting vinyasa, it's going to feel nice. <sighs> Inhale, upward facing. Exhale, and downward facing. Deep breath. <sighs> Inhale, exhale, walker hop. Top of the mat, halfway lift. Fold, rise. Hands come to your heart. Wow, I'm sweaty. Let's bend into Utkatasana and feel again. The relationship between L4, 5, S1 and the front part of your body. Okay, Let's lift the right knee and cross it over. Double bind or single bind, Garudasan, hold. Breathe. Hands are going to stay at your heart. 
because we're going to move right into Brixoshin or tree. And we're going to do a, a, um, a modification of tree called extended low branch. So inhale, bring the arms up. And instead of letting the right foot touch the inner thigh, extend the right leg and pulse the right leg up. Low branch, flowing in the wind. Breathe, hold, pause, bring the leg back, and come right down into standing split. Breathe. Urva. Prasarita Ika Padasan. <sighs> Bring the right foot down. Inhale back to Utkatasana. This is how we do an eagle. Arms rise. Press into the right foot. Lift the left knee. Bind either single or double. Fold into deep. Hold. Hands come to your heart. Hold. Shoulders tall. Release the tailbone, keep the head relaxed. Inhale, open up, Vriksashin with an extended low branch. Where's gravity hitting you now? Well, you know, left leg. So let's fight against gravity. Five, four, three, two. Here's your last one, hold. Bring that left leg all the way back. See if you can just grab onto the right leg and come into Urva Prasarita Ika Padasan. I just touched the back wall with my foot. Lost my balance, didn't expect that. Breathe. Here we go. Pull your body in toward that thigh. Inhale. Left foot down. Sweep the arms up. Exhale and fold. Inhale, ha. Hands to the mat. Connecting vinyasa or downward facing dog. One push up or two. I'm still going to stick with the two. Downward facing dog. Left leg under the left hip. Lift the right leg. Step the right leg forward. Straighten the right leg and bring the left foot up. Inhale. Halfway lift into your Parsifal Tonasan. Breathe. Fold. Bring that back left foot into warrior two position. Bring the, right, the left hand to your left hip and let's back into Trukonasan. Breathe. Bring the right hand down. Lift the top left. Full Trukonasan. Breathe. Tailbone again. We're not tucking it. We want that tailbone to lift into the heart. Breathe. Bend the front knee, side angle, no movement. Breathe. And inhale into warrior two. Connecting vinyasa or right into down dog, your choice always. Always your choice. Downward facing dog. Good, I'm gonna keep my back to you so you can see what I'm doing with my low back. Step the left leg forward. Straighten the front left leg and bring the right foot up so that you're in Utita Parsifal Tonasan position. Now, push back on the right hip. Your anchors are your feet, your legs, and your pelvic floor. So squeeze the legs together. Inhale, ha. Exhale, fold and hold. Breathe. Squeeze those legs together. Make sure you're not rounding the back. You want to keep the tailbone lifted. So the tailbone is staying high. It's going to take a lot of flexibility in the hamstrings. That isn't available to you. Two water bottles under your hands. A chair in front of you blocks, whatever you need, but keep that tailbone lifted. 
three, it really stretches and strengthens the second level of pelvic floor muscles. Look at your back foot. Bring that back foot into warrior two position. Tuck your left hip in. Bring your right hand to your hip and immediately engage the upper right deltoid. Lift the left arm toward the front as if we were doing trikonasana preparation. Then bring the left hand in and rise through the right arm. Trikonasana. Notice the upper back is working really hard, right side. Left hip wants to come forward because we want to facilitate the twist. Breathe. Now from trikonasana to Uttita Parsva Konasana, we just bend the front knee and keep everything else straight. There it is, side angle. There's a connection. There's a similarity between each posture. From side angle, warrior two, we just lift the body. They are not really separate postures. They're all connected. They're like first cousins. Take a breath, connecting vinyasa. Go through it all. One push up, maybe two, your choice. Downward facing dog. Beautiful. Drop onto your knees. Walk your hands to your to your knees and come on up. So camel ustrasana is not a posture I do often. We're gonna do it quickly today because I'm running out of time. I really need another 15 minutes, but that's okay. Inhale, lift both arms. We're gonna take the left hand to almost your butt cheek. So if your SI joint is here, we're gonna bring your index finger right below the SI joint. Now leave the tailbone alone, leave the spine alone. Inhale and reach up. And on the exhale, let the hips come forward. You wanna think about your hips and your knees pressing up against a wall. Roll the shoulders back like Bhujangasana. And I don't look up because I don't feel it's really safe for the cervical spine to hinge like that. But it's my choice. If you like hinging the hip, the neck up, go right ahead, breathe. Inhale and bring both arms up. Don't forward fold yet. Take the right hand to that fleshy part right underneath the SI joint. Inhale, lift the left arm. Roll the right shoulder back, elbows to the back wall, and think lift tailbone, mutation in the hips because it's a back extension. Hips come forward and line up with the knees. Squeeze the legs together. Don't let them splay open. Think block between the knees. Inhale and rise, tuck the toes and sit back on your toes, tuck the baby toes in and hips left and right. So we're not gonna do a forward bend after a deep back bend. Instead, we're gonna do circles. So circle around one way, release your belly, that's gonna release the low spine and then circle around the other way. Simple and easy. Hands to the mat couple of cat and cows, easy and gentle. Don't ram it, don't ram it. And eventually get really high in the angry cat. So Marjorie Asin only stretching the muscles that were just super contracted, staying away from the spine. Beautiful. Sit back. Extend the legs, and we're going to come into a supine rixasana to open up the piriformis. So, right leg in line, like we were going to do tree, and then open it up and let gravity do the work of, of uh, pigeon. Let the shoulders be long in between, length between the low ear lobe and the shoulders. And then do your best to relax so there's a good external rotation of the right thigh. If you don't feel it enough here, cross the leg over, cross the right leg over your left leg, ankle off of the left quad 
and you can also find pigeon here. This might be too much if you have a tight piriformis or a tight inner thigh. But this is still an external rotation. Where is gravity getting your body? You know, you can feel it. Breathe. Bring the right knee into your chest. Keep the left leg long. Grab the heel on the inside of your right foot. Inhale and pull it up into half happy baby, Arda. I'm, I guess it would be Arda. Ananda Balasan, that would probably do it. And then if you can, let's open up the right leg and come into a supine split. I was actually in a yoga class one time where the instructor said, and bring the toes of the right foot behind your head on the right shoulder. I'm like, oh, I don't think my body does that. Bend the right knee and let's go to the opposite side. So pigeon now, opposite side. Begin with the easier one first. So coming into that supine tree, If you're really tight in the piriformis, you might need to have something underneath this knee. If this isn't cutting it for you, you're super flexible in the piriformis, you wanna cross the left leg over, to make sure the ankle is off the thigh, not on the knee, and you've got a left dorsiflexed foot, and then let gravity do the work. This is safer if you're tight um, in pigeon, um, so Kaputasan, um, if you do Art of Raja Kaputasan, the more classic way, and you're really flexible in the hip, you don't have to worry. But if you're not super flexible, doing it the classic version, you're putting all your body weight on muscles and tendons that aren't ready to receive it. Well, this can be a really safe way to do it. And you're still gonna feel it. Bring the left knee into your chest. Grab on the inside of the heel. And then line the hand up over the knee. Extend the right leg away. So we have Ardha Ananda Balasana. And then maybe extend into prone split. Great. And take your toes on your left foot and touch the mat over your head. Good. Bend both knees, pull both knees into your chest on your left and right, rock and roll. Left and right. Inhale and come on into Shavasana. We only have a short time because I'm running a little behind. But if you want to stay in Shavasana, stay here. Feel gravity over you now like a weighted blanket. Gravity pushing you down into the earth and really helping you become more grounded. Start to get movement in your body and both knees and let your knees go from left to right. Let's close down the spine without holding a twist either left or right. Just lubricating what's left of the low spine, what needs it. And so as you go through your day today, begin to think about when gravity is helping you and when gravity is making you work harder. And instead of feeling overwhelmed with the weight of what you are carrying, remember that that weight will only serve to make you stronger. And it is perception of your reality that makes everything on your plate palatable.
scroll to your right side, hold the right side position. My dad would have said it's the cheese on the macaroni. You don't need the cheese because the macaroni tastes good, but cheese on the macaroni makes it even better. Come into that standing, sitting position, easy sukhasan. And now feel gravity on you once more. Like a warm shawl over your shoulders or a warm blanket sitting on your couch watching a football game. Breathe. Hands come together at your heart. And because I didn't introduce myself at the beginning, my name is Mary Ellen Fowler. This is the Woods Community Facebook Live practice, which takes place on Monday and Wednesday at 6 a.m. There's a myriad of classes on the Woods Facebook page. So take advantage of all of them. Take a deep breath in and let the breath go. Loka, Samasta, Sukino Bhavantu. May all things be happy, healthy, and free. And may it begin with my deeds, my words, my actions. Jai Bhagwan Yogis. Namaste. See you on Wednesday morning at 6 a.m. Bye, Woods community. Oh, hi, Jennifer. I didn't know you were with me. I'm waving.